I see so many regenerative farmers lose money in their first year uh, because of some very simple uh, agronomy uh, practices that uh, simply we throw out when we're tr transitioning to regenerative agriculture. Typically what we find is people hear about regenerative agriculture and they go, you beauty, I can basically cut my nitrogen applications by half uh, and I'll still get you know the same amount of yields. And that's not correct yet. So typically what we see is people go, okay, let's transition. They more or less start and they get this drop in their productivity or their profit or the yield um, in the first few years. And then they go, it doesn't work, um, it, this thing's rubbish. Firstly, your farm and your systems and your soil isn't uh, at a point where it can supply the nutritional requirements of the crop. So what I mean by that is some, so it's, it's not incorrect for the crop to not need as much nitrogen as you're putting on. There's microbes in the soil that, uh, so free living microbes that can uh, produce a heap amount of nitrogen, uh, say 20 kilos a hectare, there's a fair amount of nitrogen per year available for the crop. Likewise, the plants can participate in the rhizophagy cycle that can contribute 30% of the plant's nitrogen requirements. But people hear that and they stop applying their nutrition, which is fundamental to uh, the crop. And so that's why they get this uh, reduction in the yield. And it's typically because of uh, poor nitrogen management, but also potentially phosphorus management as well. And so they just cut out the yields and uh, that's not very good. And so it's important to remember that one ton of wheat has to export, like it's physically in the actual grain we're exporting, 23 kilos of nitrogen, three kilos of phosphorus, uh, four kilos of potassium, a kilo and a half of sulfur, 0.4 kilos of uh, calcium, 1.2 kilos of magnesium, 40 grams of manganese. Now there's a whole other uh, range of minerals and I'll point out manganese specifically uh, for a point I'll make later. But basically, the crop has to export these. They have to have it. They, they actually have to, uh, they, they need even additional minerals to this to be, able to, to be able to produce that crop. Even with nitrogen, for example, you actually need to, the rule of thumb is to double the nitrogen application because half of it, half of it is going to be lost anyways uh, to vol volatilization or leaching. So typically, you need to be applying 40 kilos per tonne of wheat uh, to be able to achieve that. And when we're targeting a four and a half tons a hectare, that's gonna work out to be 200 kilos of nitrogen. And so when you just suddenly half that, of course you're gonna half your yield. And now a lot of that nitrogen is actually supplied uh, through the breakdown of organic matter and other nitrogen sources in our soil, but still we need to be applying uh, the correct nutrition. So that's one thing, we're just simply not applying the right nutrition. And the other thing is, there's a few ideas in the regenerative space that people go, all the minerals will be looked after with biology in time. Now, that's not true. A lot of the minerals will be looked after, but some minerals just simply aren't even in the soil to begin with. So I have a client uh, and they have very, very low amounts of manganese in their total soil test. So we have a soil test um, that uses, it. it's a proxy on uh, total minerals in the soil, what will effectively could be available to uh, the plant we look at the manganese and there's super low amounts of manganese in total. And so what does that mean? It means regardless of uh, our biological activity in our soil, we're not going to have enough manganese. And so we need to either apply a uh, foliar of manganese uh, throughout the season every year, and there's no way of changing that, or we put a uh, soil uh, fertilizer out to increase that stock of manganese. But regardless, we're never going to increase the amount of manganese if there's no manganese actually in the parent material of the soil. Now, typically if a farmer does uh, stick with this uh, out of um, ideological practice effectively, because at this point it doesn't make business sense. It's only until after this point it does make business sense because we the, the soil effectively improves itself and the biology in the soil improves itself to be able to then supply a lot more of the crop with that nutrition. But it's only after a point of a pain for the farm, which we don't really want. We want to be able to uh, maintain our yield and profitability and increase it with regenerative agriculture. So I use this framework that I learned from uh, Joel Williams. It's the uh, efficiency, substitution, and redesign framework. And so this is what we run uh, our farmers through uh, when we work with them as clients. The first step is we don't change too much about the system. Too much change is bad, too much risk. 
We just wanna uh, improve the efficiencies of all our systems. So remember when I mentioned that the rule of thumb is to basically double our nitrogen applications because half it is lost anyways. Well, we have a protocol where you can buy, uh, combine a few things with your nitrogen source and effectively increase the efficiency by 30%. Which means you can reduce your nitrogen input by 30% because you're not losing as much and the and the forms of that nitrogen is better. Likewise with potassium. Potassium is only really required in large amounts at the last stage of the crop in uh, grain field. And so, yes, it's needed uh, in small amounts during the rest of the, the period. And it has a really strong link to rust resistance, but front loading all your potassium right at the start antagonizes calcium. It's going to make your crop weaker has a whole range of different problems. So the first thing we do with our farmers is we improve the efficiencies of our system. We're going to try and use a lot more uh, humic substances, foliar sprays, we're doing things in a smarter, more efficient way. That way, we can maintain our yields while increasing our efficiencies, allowing us to then take on some of these bigger ideas in regenerative agriculture. So some of the things we use within the efficiency um, component is the right uh, nutrition at the right times. So go see our critical stages of influencing yield. Uh, that's a really good video. It explains exactly what you need at different stages of uh, wheat development. And that comes back to that potassium thing. You don't quite need as much potassium until you get to grain fill. Uh, otherwise it antagonizes your calcium and you're gonna lose yield. Likewise, talking about split fertilizer applications, fully applied nutrition is really good, really, uh, really great way to improve efficiencies and uh, seed treatments. Fantastic. All those things is super easy to do. It increases the efficiency of our system, allows us to ma maintain yields while either maintaining the budget or reducing the budget depending on the risk uh, of our clients. So in this stage, we're not so much looking at getting rid of our pesticides and our herbicides and all those things. We're just really looking at increasing the efficiency of our nutrition, uh, increasing the efficiency of our herbicides and pesticides. Next is substitution. So how can we substitute a, a few things? so that it's more uh, friendly for our microbes and for our plants. So these are things like biofertilizers, biostimulants, organic fertilizers, also like biological um, disease management. Plus things like applying trichoderma, which is a natural predator of diseases. It can control, I think it's 29 different fungal pathogens with the application of one biological control method. So finally, once we improve the efficiency of our system, we substitute some of the negative things out with some uh, more beneficial things. We can actually redesign the system uh, without taking too much risk because we've already laid the fan work uh, for that. So these are things like cover cropping, crop selection and rotation, intercropping or having like polycultures, changing up our uh, tillage methods as well as integrating uh, livestock into that system. But really it's this system, it's this framework that allows us to do that without taking too much of a, a hit to our yield and to our profitability, which is super important because you can't be green if you're in the red um, and that's a big framework uh, we follow at Agrisol. So if that sounds like you and you're here, uh, or you've gone back to here because you've already, you've tried regenerative agriculture or you're thinking of trying regenerative agriculture, but you don't want to take that yield hit or that uh, profit hit, come talk to us uh, at Agrisol. You can sign up for a free consultation, um, sit down for 30 minutes, discuss some of the problems and some ways we can improve the efficiency of your system to be more regenerative. Uh, we can provide nutritional plans for you um, and all that. So. Uh, sign up for a free consult and you can see how we can help you. Awesome. Uh, thanks for watching. My name's Teal. Cheers.